Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We hallelujah. We thank God for being and bringing us back this morning. Hallelujah. On the 7th of February, God, these months are already going by so fast, God. And so we thank God for being here. Thank God for bringing us back. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited about God. I'm so excited about what God is doing. Every time I, I see when I have so much pressure coming up and I have so many things that's happening, so many things that's moving, so many things that's going on, the enemy, I see the enemy, this attack, this attack, this is attack, this is an attack. That means that God is getting ready to do something. He's getting ready to do something. I'm so excited about God. Hallelujah. Because the enemy, the more he keep coming at the me, the more I'm going to keep going on my knees, the more I'm going to keep praying and fasting to God because I know the enemy doesn't come after who he got. He come after who he trying to get. And I'm telling you, I'm, he not going to have me. He not going to have my family. He not going to have my children. I'm going to stand on the word of God. Doesn't matter what come. I'm not getting off of that wall. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to stand on his promises. I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. Come what may. Come what may. I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. I'm excited about the word of God that God has given me today. I'm just so excited because God still talks to me. God is still using me. God wakes me up. Hallelujah. With him on my mind. As my grandfather used to say, I thank God for waking me up and closing my right mind. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful thing because somebody didn't get up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up in their right mind. But God woke us up. Hallelujah. Excited about him. Excited about who he is. Who he is. Excited about our future. And I'm so excited about who God is. Hallelujah. So let us come on in the worship this morning. Morning. Hallelujah. Let us saturate our hearts and our minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To receive from God this morning because he is worthy of the praise. He is worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We gonna surrender this day over to the Lord because ain't nothing we can do about it. So we gonna surrender that thing over to the Lord this morning. I want you to do is in our worship. Hallelujah. Just let it and just begin to sing and worship with me. Doesn't matter what has happened, just begin to sing. God said that for the spirit of heaviness, he will put on a garment of praise. So right now, we want to let go and let God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I surrender all to you. Every
Give every circumstance over to God. Give every problem over to him. Hallelujah, because he alone can handle it. Oh, God, withholding nothing. Hey, withholding nothing. Hey, withholding nothing. Oh, withholding nothing. You can have all of me, God. You can have It's too much for 
you to handle it, it hurts your heart. And when it hurts your heart, it's too much. Whatever it may be, God, we give it over to you, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that, God, you come in. And, God, you begin to come in and shift things, God. Shift the atmosphere, God. Wherever you may be right now in the name of Jesus. If you're sitting in your bed, if you're, if you're sitting in your living room, God, I, I, I'm just telling you, I double dog you, dare you to begin to lift your hands up and begin to shout. Begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin to say, hallelujah. Begin to give it over to God in the name of Jesus. Whatever may have happened, just give it over to God. Release it over to him. If you're worried about how you're going to pay your bill, if you're worried about how you're going to, uh, uh, if you need a job, if you need a car, if you need a place to stay, I double dog dare you to begin to lift it up to God this morning. Oh, God, so can He's a cop. you to give it over to him because he can oh my god oh my god he can handle it give it over oh so god we thank you this morning we thank you this morning that there it is hallelujah keep on i feel it in the atmosphere keep on there it is i feel it i feel it if you just keep on saying thank you jesus if you just keep on saying thank you jesus oh he he'll come in he'll come in he'll come in he'll turn it around he'll break conviction he'll turn it around he'll break conviction oh thank you thank you that's it thank you tell him thank you tell him thank you tell him thank you for the problem tell him thank you for the solution tell him thank you Oh, so ha ha, say, can you get it? Oh, say, can you get it? I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. So right now, God, we're not going to withhold it. No more, God. We've been bearing it long enough. So right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we release it to you. I don't care if it was a phone call. I don't care if it was whatever it may be. We're going to release it over to God. Even in our circumstances, if you got a bill due, release it over to God. If you need a job, release it over to God. If you need housing, release it over to God. God told me this morning, I got a word for you. That he said, if you begin to do some things, he's going to do, oh my God. He said he's going to pour out his spirit. Oh my God. But it's going to require you to do something. Oh my God. God is getting ready to release the abundance. Hallelujah. For those that have been stuck, for those that have been looking at their problems, for those that have been looking at what's going on in this country, for those who have been looking at what's been going on around them, hallelujah, you're going to stay in that place. But God is saying for those that are seeking him and they want greater and they want things to change in their life, that God is getting ready to do something, but it's going to require a greater sacrifice. So right now, it's going to require a greater sacrifice. So right now, we thank you, God, that I decrease and you increase in me, God. That you come in this word that you have given me. This is not my word. This is your word. This is your holy scripture. All I can do is just be a vessel to be used by you. And God, I am praying for deliverance of your people. Deliverance for your people. Deliverance of people. Deliverance of people. Because so we go through is because of people. So much of what we battle is because of what people do. It's what people say. And so much of us have been predicated by what people have said, what the people have done. So much of what we have been bound to is by people. But God has said, release.
these people this morning. So much of, of what we go through, so much of our hurt is because of people. God wants you to release people. People have too much control. People have too much control. They rule our emotions. They control our life. People, people, and what words people have said. People, people. They rule, they control so much of our feelings. They control so much of our emotions because of people. And God is saying, give it over to me. Because he's not a man. <laughs> he's not a man. So he cannot lie. He's not a man. So release it over to him this morning. I pray for deliverance in this area this morning. I pray for deliverance. From us looking at people and comparing ourselves to people that have nothing to do. They can't do nothing for you. They can't do no more than what God allowed them to do. So we thank you right now, God, for this word and for what, God, you're going to do for your people. I'm excited this morning. And God, I decrease and I cancel every assignment of the enemy that will come up to hinder, to block God from your people receiving from you this morning. God, in the name of Jesus, God, I give it over to you, God. God, we give it over to you right now, God. We put it at the altar right now. I want you to put it at the spiritual altar. Put it at the altar. Do it with me. One, two, three. Put it at the altar. Put it at the spiritual altar this morning so that you can receive what it is that God has for you. That God, that you will open up the eyes of your people. Take off the scales off of their eyes. Circumcise their ears, God, so that they may hear on your frequency for their lives and the plans that you have for them. And we give it all over to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. He's worthy. Hallelujah. God had me. I've been dealing with, hallelujah, prayer and fasting. For the past two weeks, I hadn't been fasting like I should, like I normally do. Hallelujah. I would go on fasting, fast all week longs, and, and, and just fast, fast all the time. But since I have been working at Meridian and working at Vista, Hallelujah. And all of this work and my work schedule, so many hours. Last week I did some 90 hours in one week. And so God, even God showed me that I did those 90 hours even while I was fasting. And so God brought me back to this place of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Me and the, the intercessors, my prayer warriors, my uh, my sisters, my friend, Auntie Baby, and Cousin Latoya, and brought us back to that place that we were, we have always been, but things have been coming in our lives and shifting us around and, and things have been coming and we had, we kind of gotten away from it. We had been doing it consistently. And so God, for the past two weeks, we have been really going hard for the Lord and, and wanting to see things change. And God had told us that in order for us to see the change that we have been praying for, in order for God to, for us to see the things that we have been praying for our family, praying for our children, praying for the ministry, that God was saying that we got to get back to fasting. So since we have been, been in that place, Things have been opening up, hidden things have been shining in the light on things. And, and God has been showing and breaking off things within us. Because let me tell you, it first has to break off within you. Before it can break off in somebody else. So what God had me to say this morning 
is he says that I can give you so many words. I can, I can give you so many scriptures. I can give you all of these elaborate speeches and, um, and, and you will hear it and you will say, oh, that was a good word. <clears throat> so many testimonies I can give you about how God has delivered me and how God has set me free and, and all of these things. Uh, but, and, and all of those things, but it, it, what does it do for you? It'll sound good for a moment and you'll hear the word and you'll say, that was a good word and that was for me. But how do you, it, it, it's just like for a moment, you'll feel that way, right? And you'll feel excited for that moment and, and you'll be like, yeah, that was confirmation. But then after a while, the things begin to come back again and the emotions and the feelings begin to come back because you really haven't had the resolve. You really haven't gotten into the place that God can break it up and really do what he needs to do so it can't come back again. And so what God was telling me this morning, we want to see victory. Oh. And we want to see true victory. Not those moments of victory. Not those moments where we hear a word and, and we get excited. and um, and But then we it's still right there. The problem is still there. And then a few days go by and it's back again. And so what God was showing me that that, that he's going to require, he's requiring in this moment a greater sacrifice. That God is requiring a greater sacrifice. And that sacrifice is in fasting. Prayer and fasting. We want God to deliver we want to see change. We want to see this great things happen. But God says it's going to require a greater sacrifice. It's going to require a greater sacrifice for deliverance if we want to see change in our lives. In order for change to come, haven't you seen something um, when it, it, that meta metamorphosis stage of a, of a plant, right? And the plant it goes in as a seed, right? A little seed, and then it has to go into the ground, and it has to go through a process of things. Even before we can see the bud come out. That means that seed has to go in and that seed has to die. So in order for the roots to be to grow out, that seed that you see as a one tiny particle, it has to die in order for the substance to come out, right? So in order for things to change, some things has to be uprooted and it has to die. So when that seed goes into the ground, in order for change, something has to die. But see, we don't want to go through that process. We don't want to go through the sacrificial process like Jesus did. Jesus had to die. There is something Sacrificial. Give myself away so you can use me. And we thank you, God. Thank you, musicians and my sons, and for the worship. Because this word right here, I wanna, I wanna teach it. I wanna get it into you, so that. You will know this is what we got to do. That it requires a greater sacrifice. The seed must die in order for things to come out, in order for the plant to grow, in order for the roots to form. Something has to die 
It has to die. Your flesh has to die. It has to die. Family, if we want to see change, if we want to see trueness, if we want to see greatness, if we want to see the things that God has, it must die. Our flesh must die. Our will must die. Our way must die in order to see change. And how would those things happen if we don't fast? How would your flesh, your flesh, your flesh must die? Your will must die. Your way must die. Look at prayer through prayer and fasting in order for Jesus to be prepared to die. Look at Jesus' life. Look what happened with Jesus in order for Jesus. So, so calm. I didn't even say thank you, Holy Spirit. In order for Jesus to die on the cross, his flesh must die. In order for Jesus to be prepared to die by uh, but to hang on the cross, his will had to be broken. What did Jesus have to do? Did he not have to go into the wilderness? What did Jesus have to do? He went into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. This was in preparation for him to be able to die on the cross. So God is requiring of you for those who have been praying and laboring over a certain thing that you've been asking God to do, whether it be uh, for a uh, uh, business, uh, uh, to have a new business or uh, to go back to school or for your children and your family to be saved and, and for different things to happen uh, for the church, for the country, for there requires a sacrifice. And that sacrifice must be fasting. Jesus had to do it. His flesh had to die. What fasting does is it kills your flesh. Amen. It kills you from people. It kills you from worrying about what people say and being ruled by and controlled by your emotions. It kills your emotions. It kills your, your flesh and it must die. What did Jesus do for 40 days and 40 nights? What did Moses do? In order for Moses to go forth in his call, in his purpose, he had to die. In order for him to go to Egypt to do what? To, 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 to lead the people out of Egypt. In order for Moses to do those things. In order for Moses to get the Ten Commandments. In order for Moses to do anything. In order to lead the people out of wilderness. In order to lead them through the wilderness. Moses had to fast. And guess what happened in those times. There were three men in the Bible in which that fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And that was Jesus, and that was Elijah, and that was Moses. Look at the call. Look at the sacrifice that they had to do. Look what was required of them in order for Elijah. He was the only prophet left. He was the only prophet left. And what did he have to do? In order for him to see the greater. In order to him to do his godly assignment that God had given him. So why do we think that we're not going to have to do it? 
Now, if you don't want anything and if, if you want to stay the way and you want to still complain about your circumstances, because I don't know, I don't know what complaining do because it surely don't help me. If you want to stay in that place where you continue to complain and, and mope and, and all of those things, then guess what? You're going to continue to see the same results. You're going to continue to have the same problems. You're going to still continue to feel defeated. You're still going to feel the same way. Change requires sacrifice. Change requires for you to do something different. If you want something different to happen. In order for me to get my master's degree, I had to sacrifice. I had to work. I'm a single mother. I had to go to clinicals. I had to do internship plus work 40 hours, 60 hours a week, plus come home, study when I get home at nine o'clock at night sometimes and hallelujah and still get papers in hallelujah, still have discussions to do, still have to go to clinical supervision, have to go do groups and still work and still be a mother, pick up my son from football practice or track practice, still be there for my other son that was in college and still doing all of those things, still being a friend, still being a mother, still being a minister and all of those things. Only God can give you that. Only God can help you to make it through. Amen. That requires a sacrifice. Yes. And you can't give up because it gets hard. You can't get up because it doesn't look the way you want it to look. Keep your end goal in sight. My end goal was to get that master's. And a lot of us are too close to give up now. That's the reason why it's so hard. That's the reason why the enemy is coming. But I'm telling you, you are on the break of your breakthrough. Amen. What did Jesus do? What did Moses do? That's what they had to do. They had to present their body as a living sacrifice. Holy. You're presenting your body. When you're fasting, you're presenting your body. as a. This is your reasonable service. You're presenting your body as a living sacrifice. And you're dying to yourself. We want everything to be easy. We want everybody. We want to look at everybody's situation and, and see how ever I was talking with my cousin the other day. I said, this is going to be the last time you're going to cry about people. <laughs> this is going to be the last time you're going to sit up and dumb it down. The fact that you people don't know what you had to go through to get to where you and your husband are. Amen. People don't know the sacrifice that I have to make to get to where I am. But you want to compare yourself to me and you want to talk down about me because I drive a nice car and I live in a nice home. Well, you don't know what the hell I went through to get there. You don't see the times where I went without food, when I didn't know I was gonna be how I was gonna pay my bills. You didn't know how I was gonna feed my children, and you have the audacity to come for me. I'm going to drive the finest car. I'm going to drive and live in the finest home because God gave it to me. You better preach. Hallelujah. There comes a sacrifice. Why don't we want it? Why don't we want to see people of God to be blessed? Amen. That's not God. Why don't we want to see people of God to be blessed if they did what Jesus did? If they turned away from the table, if they went through their sacrifice, if they went through their struggles, if they went through all that they've gone to and had to go through, and now God has blessed them and opened up the windows of heaven, how can we do that as saints? God want us all to be blessed. But there is going to require a sacrifice. The disciples, 
Hallelujah. God had me, uh, uh, reminded me of the scripture in Matthew 17. Hallelujah. When he was talking about these kind come out by fasting and prayer. That's what the scripture says in, in Matthew 17 and 21. This, the, it was a, when, when, when this man had, this father had came to Jesus and he said to him that, uh, when his son was an uh, illness and he came to Jesus because he had went to the disciples and the disciples said what? He said the disciples couldn't do it. So Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. And so when that Jesus had rebuked the spirit, I want to be so when I see the spirit, I want to rebuke it. But see, how can we rebuke it and be like Jesus if we don't do what Jesus did? Come on, somebody. How are we going to do and be like Jesus? Jesus fasted, so why we think we don't? Jesus himself fasted because Jesus was in the flesh. He was in a mortal, a, a, a mortal body. He was in a falling world. So why do we think if Jesus did it, why we think we're not going to have to do it? If we want to come to the place of greater, if we want to get to the things that we want to see, the hope future, the hope that we desire, the hope, we just think things are just supposed to drop in our lap. Uh -huh. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do this no more. This is 2021. We got to change. We got to do something different. Yes. But everything comes so, uh, we want everything so easy. We want, we want everything. We want the mountain be that I removed and cast in the sea, but we don't want to have faith and we don't want to have a sacrifice. So, uh, 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 so the disciples, so the disciples pulled Jesus away and, 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 and said, well, well, why we couldn't do this, Lord? Well, well, why we couldn't do it? And you know what Jesus said? These kind come out through fasting and prayer. The reason why he had to tell the disciples that is because they were praying, but they weren't fasting. Oh, my God. There comes a time when you want to see change, when you want to see God move in your life like never before. You got to put a greater sacrifice on that thing, not money. So many people uh, 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 have been hurt by the church. I was listening to Noah Jones and, and they were talking to a prophet out of, out of Africa and he was starting to cry about how so many people in the church have been so hurt by prophets that prophesy for money or pastors that pastor that, that, that says, well, if you want this, sow a seed, make a greater sacrifice. Think about that, y'all. Where in the scripture where God said the greater sacrifice has to be finances. And so many people have, have been church hurt or people hurt by the church. They have lost their faith. They have lost their way because somebody told them a lie and they believed it. And then they gave thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. They poured themselves and now they are broken because all they had to do was their sacrifice could have just been fasting and prayer. Oh my God. Was never about money. And they love to say, oh, sow this seed and, and make this great sacrifice. Your sacrifice need to be your flesh. Your flesh need to burn. God loves the smell of burning flesh. Because that means you're letting, allowing more of him in. 
Jesus had to burn and kill his flesh. Not his bank account. Not his wallet. Moses had to do something. He had to do Elijah had to do something. He had to do it. He had to sacrifice. We see this when Jesus went to the transfiguration at the mountain. And when he was praying to God and he asked God to take this cup from him and God did not say anything to him did he and Jesus returned and replied back to him nevertheless at thy will father thy will be done so at that moment Jesus died can we look at our lives right now, even while I'm ministering this morning, and see the area that you have sacrificed that you want for God? Have you made a sacrificial offering? Not a finances, but a sacrificial offering of your fasting and your faith and your will. The disciples could not heal this man. Why? Their faith and the fact that they didn't fast. You pray, but you don't fast. You got to do both. It requires both. And look what happened. They were up there with Jesus on this mount. They saw Elias. Did they not? They saw Elias. They saw uh, Moses. And then later on in that same scripture, they couldn't cast out the devil. So this is what I'm saying. You can have the Holy Spirit. You can be saved. But if you don't do a greater sacrifice, mm -hmm. you, want God, you want God to do great things. You want to do great. You want to see your children succeed. You want to see your family uh, uh, brought. You want to see sickness and disease heal. Amen. So when Jesus spoke to them, what happened? They came out. It came out. There are going to be things and times in our lives where it will be tough, y'all. And it may appear that God is not going to change the situation or uh, uh, make a way. But it's just may be that God is wanting a deeper sacrifice. That's what I found out in these past two weeks. That God was requiring a, dip, a, a, a deeper sacrifice. I was praying for a family member of mine. And that was the whole purpose of me going into this place. Because there was nothing else that I could do. And on yesterday, when I ended my week fast on yesterday, Friday, I mean Friday morning. Guess what happened? Friday late afternoon, that person called me. Do you know what God would do? That person called me change. That person called me apologize. That person called me and was talking about God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And all it required of me was to sacrifice. <laughs> do you understand? That's all I had to do was to sacrifice. And something else happened on Friday that really caused me to feel like my fasting, uh, that it didn't work, that, 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 that the prayer fasting didn't work. But God showed me, yes, it did. Oh, my God. What God was showing me is that, yeah, I did that and through your prayer and fasting, but I also showed something that was hidden. 
So what God did was a double thing. Ha, 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 ha. And see, that's what the enemy want us to all do. Get all so caught up in what we heard. And then we see this moment of victory. And then we see this moment of defeat. But it's neither. It's neither of defeat. It's just all victory. It's both all victory because what God did was he showed me where my prayer and fasting delivered and he showed me what my prayer and fast need to get that's fun to happen to be delivered. Hallelujah. He exposed and he delivers. Hallelujah. But in order for it to come up, you got to pray. You got to fast. You got to get that dirt out. You got to get that stuff to come up. You got to get it to come up. When you pray and you fast, it gets it up out. So he says that the father of the child had more faith than God was showing me. The father of the child had more faith than the disciples. Do you understand that? The father of the child had more faith than the disciples. Why? Because disciples gave up. Oh my God. This is powerful, God. Thank you, Jesus. The disciples gave up. When they couldn't do it, they gave up. But what did the man do? He didn't give up. He said, if I can just get to Jesus. Oh my God. Ha. Ha. So, ha. Ha. Hey. Say, hey. Hey. So the disciples said, ah, oh, they gave up. They couldn't do it. But this man said, if I could just get to Jesus, because I went to your disciples and they couldn't do it. How many of us have put things on the altar, but we didn't fast and we didn't, we just prayed about it and now we done gave up. Oh my God. Because we done thought God wasn't going to do it. But you got to put a sacrifice on it. That man didn't give up. What did he do? He went to Jesus. And so we give up. We so quick to give up. We so quick to give in. We so quick to fall. The righteous man followed the seven times. What happens? But he gets up. Hallelujah. And then we want to stay there and wallow in that mess. Hallelujah. We want to stay there. We want to wallow in it. Like the pig. Hallelujah. Wallow in the feeling. Wallow in the motion. <laughs> God don't get, he don't care about your emotions. He looks at your faith. I believe God is going to change this situation. I believe God is going to heal my child. I believe God is going to, isn't that what that man did? He still believed that God could do it. So the disciples couldn't do it. So he went to Jesus. He still had faith. I believe. So I'm going to put a greater sacrificial offering. And that is my flesh. I'm going to put my flesh at the altar. He didn't give up. This kind only come out by what? Prayer and fasting. Many times we want a quick fix. We really don't want to do what it takes to see the change that we are asking for. You know what God just told me? Y'all, a lot of us like to, 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 to say, well, we done tried everything. <laughs> I just heard that. Oh, well, I didn't like I did before. Y'all, I be telling on myself when I be, when I be teaching this stuff, God be bringing me up. He don't be bringing nobody else up. He be bringing me up when I was saying, hi, oh Lord, I done did this, Lord. I done pray God and turn my, for my wicked way. <laughs> God, I done did what you told me to do. God I ain't living that lifestyle. 
And I just thought God would just go, just whoosh. <laughs> because I did something that I was supposed to do. <laughs> and so I came to God and I was just like, ooh, God. So we love to just say, oh, I'm reading the scripture every day. I'm doing it every day, Lord. <laughs> but then our faith ain't. So a lot of times we're just doing it to say we did it. Does that move God? But your sacrifice? Uh, uh, there's a scripture that talks about that. Uh, what, what did I say? Um, in uh, Matthew 6. In 16 through 18. When a fast. When you fast. Do not look sober. As the somber, as the hypocrites do, <laughs> for they uh, disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. So, honey, you don't receive your reward if you want to sit up there and stay in that pity potty, in that place, to act like you done did all of this and you doing this and you ain't seen no change because you ain't really changed. He said right here, you a hypocrite. <laughs> I didn't say this. I mean, Jesus, is. He, he said this. He said that truly, I tell you, they have received your reward. So you got what you wanted, a pity party. You wanted somebody to feel sorry for you. So now you done got what you wanted. Now go ahead on. Because that's what all you really want. You wanted somebody to just feel sad. Yeah, what was done to you was wrong. So what? Get over it. If I sit up here and worry about all of them nasty men that touched me and molested me and all of the stuff that I done had to go through in my life, good God of mercy. And I had to grow up. I had to get over it. I had to forgive and I had to let it go. So I had got my reward. If I wanted to stay in that place, I would have gotten my reward. But the devil is a lie. Thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah. He said, truly, I, I tell you, they have received their reward in full, he says. Hallelujah. But when you fast, put all on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. Right. But only to your father. When you are fasting, when you are going before God, when you're putting that thing at the altar and you're saying, God, deliver me, deliver me from lust, deliver me. It's not that you're not going to fall. It's not that you're not going to have problems and you're not going to have struggles. But God, you're saying, God, I put it at the altar and God, I want to be delivered. Who is unseen? So God is unseen. So you can't see it. So I'm not doing it for no uh, fame or fortune. I'm not doing it to be seen. I'm not doing it to be glorified, but I'm doing it so God can see my sacrifice. And so then what God would then do is he will honor your sacrifice and then he would do what it was that you were sacrificing for. And your father who sees, I don't care about all the body else seeing me because you can't put me in the brand new house that I want. You can't put me in the place that I'm asking God to take me and my children. You can't put me there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I don't care if you see it. Hallelujah. And it says, and if your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. So that's the reason why I said to my cousin, don't you sit up there and say no, because they don't know the sacrifice. That's just God rewarding you openly. Oh my God. That's just God rewarding you openly because he's seen your sacrifice. He's seen your struggle. He's seen what you had to go. He's seen the mind battles. He's seen it. And God will reward you openly. So now people can see you driving in your Mercedes and your Lexus. They can see you living in a, 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 a million dollar, a half a million dollar, a whatever home that it is, hundred thousand dollars. I don't care whatever it may be. They will be able to see it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because God will reward you openly. 
He will do it for you. God is requiring what is fasting. In the Bible, fasting is when people have given up food Hallelujah. or drank and spent time praying and mourning to God. That's what fasting is. It's giving up something. And I know people love to talk about, oh, you can just fast from games. Oh, you can just fast from social media. But let me tell you, is that really a sacrifice? Come on, y'all. Come on. Y'all don't want to give up nothing, so you just say, well, I could give up the TV. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but you want God to give you a million dollars. But you don't want to sacrifice. You don't want to do anything for him. You want to still act the way you act. You want to still look at people and treat people any kind of way. You still want to live the life you want to live. But you want God to do all of these things for you. It just doesn't work that way. None of us, many of us, I don't know anybody that was born with money. Just hand it to them. Everything that I have been given, God has required for me to work with the works of my hands. And because I work with the works of my hand, God has blessed me. Okay. Amen. So it requires a deeper People just want things to just pop up like popcorn in order for Philip to get a scholarship, in order for me to, to get to where I'm going, in order for Daniel to get to where he's going. It requires a sacrifice. All right. That's right. You had to put in the work. Yeah. One, it requires why fast? And, and what will fasting do for you is it requires a deeper relationship with God. Okay. Two, seeking the Holy Spirit for guidance. That's what fasting and prayer does. One, it requires a deeper relationship where it is a deeper, when you fast, when you pray, you will get in a deeper relationship with God. So what God would then begin to do is he will talk to you. He will tell you what you need to do and the things that you need to get out of you. If you got unforgiveness, if there's any malice, if there's any strife, if there's anything that you get need to get out, anger, bitterness, whatever, hatred, whatever it may be, God God wants a deeper relationship with you. And then what he will begin to do is he will, but will begin to work with you and clean you up and get you in a place to where then you'll begin to seek the Holy Spirit for God. Now God will begin to show you, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to go. Isn't that what he did for Moses? When Moses did what he needed to do, then God showed him. Isn't that what he did for Jesus? Isn't that what he did for Jehoshaphat? What did Jehoshaphat do in 2 Corinthians? Chronicles, uh, 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 um, first Chronicles 20. What did he do? He, uh, uh put everybody on a fast. He put the, the, the animals on a fast. They went on a fast. And what did God do? He sent the prophet and the prophet said, this battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And when they went into the city, when they went into the battleground. See, we keep on looking at what is. We keep on looking with our eyesight, but we're not seeing what our past prayer and our fasting is going to do. We're not seeing it in the spirit. We're not seeing what God is doing. And that's because we're not in a deeper relationship with him. We keep on worrying about what they say. We keep on worrying about how it looked like, what it looked like. And that's why I said you got to kill people now. You got to kill what people are saying. You got to kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Hallelujah. So what does fasting do? Deeper relationship with God. Seeking the Holy Spirit for God. For God shows up and he will change me. That's what it happens. God will show up and he will change you and he will make things. He will then change it and he will give you the future that you hope for. Four, grow in spiritual strength. 
That's the reason why Jesus was able to die. That's the reason why Jesus was able to take all of the beating. That's the reason why Jesus was able to take being hung on the cross. That's the reason why Jesus was able to take it because he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and God prepared him for what was to come. Don't think you're not going to be tempted. Was not Jesus tempted in the wilderness? What did the first thing the enemy did? It says after when Jesus had fasted, he, the Bible says that Jesus became hungry. Don't you see? That's when the enemy is going to come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you see that, cousin? That's when the enemy comes. What did you just do? Did you not pray and you just not fasted? Did you not do it? It says that after Jesus had fasted, he became hunger. And after the fast was when the Satan came and he tempted him. What just happened today? What just happened to me on Friday? Did, oh, my God. Ha. Huh? Oh, that's why we must get delivered from people. That's why we got to be delivered from our emotions and our feelings. Uh, because what happens is after Jesus had fasted, ha, huh, so calm. After he had fasted, the scripture says he became hungered. But what happened when he was tempted? He said, Satan came to him, if thou be the son of man, cast these bread into stone. What was because his spiritual strength, he had grew in his spiritual strength. What did Jesus do? He did turn to say, for it is written. That's what we have to do. We have to speak back with the word of God. So in our fasting, it increases our spiritual strength. So what happened when Jesus had was hungered after his fast, that's when Satan comes to tempt. Hallelujah. Let me see if that fast worked. Oh, God is saying, let me see. Let me see if that fast worked. Let me see if you grown, are you still going to be bothered by what people say? Are you going to still be moved by the situation? Are you going to still be moved? So you will grow in spiritual strength. And so what, what happened is, oh my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. So what happens is Jesus grew. And so he would say, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What that fasting would do was you would then begin to speak to your situation. You would begin to speak to the sickness. You would begin to speak to the poverty and lack. And you would say, oh, for it is written that I am the head and not the tail. That I am the above and not beneath. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then five, it says to have a more intimate relationship. Six, return to God in repentance. What that does is it causes you to repent. You must stay in a repentance way with God. I repent daily. Every, hey, repent. Seven, freedom to loose the chains, the yokes of generational curses. Then you become free. Then you become free. You're able to become free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eight. To stay humble and for protection. Then God will come in. And as uh, Ezra 8, 21 through 20, I proclaim a fast so that we might be hum humble ourselves before God. And ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with our possession so that we fast it and petition our God about this. We want to see God deliver us. We want to see God protect us. We want to see God change things in our family. We want to see the protection. We want to see things broken off of us. Then we got to petition God. How do we petition God with our fasting and our prayer? 
Nine, seeking God's direction. Isn't that what Moses did? He sought God's direction. He sought God's direction. Hallelujah. Philip, will you go get my charger? Uh, we, he, 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 he sought God's direction. This is what we have to do. And so when Moses did that, so when Moses had did what he needed to do, guess what God did when he was at the Red Sea, when he was at that Red Sea moment, because Moses had got where he needed to be. He was in that place in God. God told him to stop crying and stretch forth that rod. And when he did that thing, did not the, 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 the sea begin to divide? So what God is saying this morning, y'all, in my closing, is we got to get in a place with God where God is going to do it. And as I was reading and writing this morning, God was showing me that what he was about to do and that he wants us to a greater sacrifice. God was showing me that he wants a greater sacrifice. Do you understand in order he is not wants, he's requiring. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for correcting me. He is requiring a greater sacrifice. When Dr. Beeler told me about when I called her and I, I, well, I had texted her yesterday and she told me what fasting does is fasting also brings out what's hidden so you can deal with it. So that's what God told me to tell you today. Is what fasting is fun to do. And why God is request, requiring you to go deeper. There are things that God wants to do for you. But you're going to have to sacrifice. And the only way you can do that is through prayer and fasting. Because that's what the scripture says. It says, the scripture says in Matthew 17 he said that these kind come out by prayer and fasting there are some things that have been happening in our lives that are stubborn and it seems that it doesn't want to move it doesn't want to shift it doesn't want to go anywhere but God is saying he is requiring a greater sacrifice a deeper relationship with him an intimate relationship with him. And how do we get that? It's through our praying in the Holy Spirit and our fasting. I was uh, looking at it one way. I was looking at that scripture one way. I was just looking at it as, well, my prayer, my fasting, God, you should just go ahead on and do it. Because you said that's what you're going to do. And so God began to show me that no, when Apostle Beeler said that to me, I was like, no, it brings out also what is hidden. It exposes what needs to be dealt with. So we can handle it. So we can handle it. I was looking at it one way. But God want us to look at it his way. Ooh. He don't want us to look at it our way. That's our problem because we in the way. God want us to get out of the way, look at it his way so we can move on and have the life that he has for us. Elijah did it. Moses did it. Jehoshaphat did it. He had the whole people to do it. Jesus did it. Why we think we ain't going to do it? Why we think we can't do it? Why we think we're not going to have to do it? I, I started laughing.
happy because I was writing this down and God was telling me what he was about to do. And I was thinking about what I was saying that you got to do a sacrificial offering. <laughs> and I was thinking about how the prophets and, and different evangelists and preachers would say stuff like, oh, put a seed on it. <laughs> and how so many people that have been gone astray and how, because people have said, put a sacrificial. Put a seed on it. God don't want your money. You need to, your flesh need to burn. He wants you. He wants you. He don't want your money. He wants your flesh to burn. How do our flesh burn? Is in our sacrifice. Pull it away from the table. Pull it away from the table. And I saw it with my eyes. I saw my family member call me. Change. So God told me to tell you this. In the next 90 days. He's requiring a sacrifice. Now some of y'all think I'm going to ask for money. Nope. This ain't that ministry. You need to give yourself to the Lord in the next 90 days. God says in the next 90 days, you are going to have to be, it's going to be very important for your life to see you and your family for the breakthrough that you have been believing and asking God for. But first, there is going to be something that you're going to have to do. Things are going to be exposed. And you can't look at what's going on. You can't look at children acting up. You can't look at circumstances and situations, jobs, lack, poverty. Exposure is going to have to come. And God is going to use that to mold you and to shape you. God wants to do for your life. Some may see it sooner than the 90 days. Because you're going to really take it serious. And you're going to present your body as a living, holy sacrifice to God. But it depends on your devotion. It depends on your devotion. What I do when I begin to fast, and I want y'all to write this down if you can. When I begin to pray before that Monday comes, God has already shown me areas that I need to pray and I fast for. I have a notepad. This is my notepad. And what I do is, I take this notepad and I begin to write. I write down, see, right here, two, two, two. Right here, you see that? I begin to write down prayer and fasting. And I begin to write down what it is that God, I'm looking for God to do in this fast. I write down what I'm doing. We have to be strategic because the enemy is strategic. So we must direct it. And then what I do after I write it down, I then begin to pray in my understanding. And then for about an hour, I pray in the Holy Spirit. And then I go on my fast. And then during that time, God gives me word. Usually at the end of my fast, something always happens. I get revelation. I get assignments. 
And that's what God is going to do for you. But you must. He's requiring a greater sacrifice. You are going to. uh, In order for you to be free. And to be in victory. It is time. That you will see. In this time you will see a relationship. God told me in this time. That you're going to see relationships restored. Mindset free. And God also said that you're going to see a wealth transfer. And many things, many things that you have been praying for. Some of y'all have been praying for God to do some things for some years. And guess what? You ain't got to sow me no seed. I'm getting it together where you're going to be able to give into my ministry if my ministry bless you. Hopefully next week I'll have it together where you will be able to bless the ministry. Because God wants you to be blessed. How you get is better to give than to receive. So God will allow you to bless me in, in by your giving and if that's what, it, what God tells you to do. But God is requiring a greater sacrifice. So we thank you right now, God, for this word. We thank you, God, for what you're doing, God, for your people. Thank you, God, for the word of prayer and fasting. That is going to have to require. And oh, I must say this. Stop doing routine, routine fasting. So many times I would do routine fasting every year. You know how the church would call a fast and they would do a Daniel fast. There's nothing wrong with the Daniel fast. That's very important. Some people, because they have ailments, they might have to do a Daniel fast. They might not can just do a total complete fast because they have to take medicines and different things of that nature. So you talk to God and you ask God, on what type of fast that you need to do. But many of us have done routine on fast where we just fast and we don't have a, a target and, and we're really doing it for. We're just doing it because the pastor said to do it. So what God is saying, no, no more of that. You must begin. He's requiring a greater sacrifice in this season. And I've and I heard the Lord say, He said, "Well, the Holy Spirit, because it's not like God came in uh, God's auto voice, and and I don't want to get caught up in all of that. I heard God, because if you heard, really heard God, they said no, His voice is fear and trembling. You gonna buy? So I'm gonna reframe that. Let me say, I heard the Holy Spirit because it spoke to me in the spirit." And it says that he's requiring a greater sacrifice for the next 90 days. Some may come out of it sooner, but God is saying that he's going to move like never before. And so we thank you for your word right now, God. We thank you for what he's doing right now. In the name of Jesus, some people are going to come out jobs that they have been praying God for. They're going to be able to go back to school. They're going to begin to start business. Businesses are going to begin to flourish. People are going to start to to just pop up, pop up, pop up. Things are really going to change if you really commit to the Lord. If you really go into those seven, nine points that I was saying today about sacrificing and, and, and fasting. And that deeper relationship with God. So we thank you right now, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for restoration. We thank you, God, for healing. I feel the spirit of the Lord. I see things. Don't you feel it, cousin? Hallelujah. God is going to do a miraculous thing. He's going to do a miraculous thing in your life if you allow him. And so we thank you right now, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your people. 
We cancel the assignment of the enemy that will come up and try to block and hinder this word from going forth, from people being set free and delivered. We cancel the assignment of the enemy. We thank you, God, for what you're doing for your people. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the doors that you're about to open, for the way the uh, the, uh, the, the, the the way that you're about to make for people, God. We thank you, God, for sickness being healed, diseases, God. We thank you for it right now, relationships being restored, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you're doing, the wealth transfer that's about to happen for your people, the people of God. We've been trusting in, in, in the government, but God said he's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for you. Not a stimulus check, but God is going to do it for you. We thank you for what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for my children. We thank you. We cancel every assignment of the enemy. We thank you for the doors being open. We thank you for the job, God, for Daniel. We thank you, God, right now for filling with even more scholarships, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for God blessing me with the one job, paying me as much as I make on two. God, we thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the increase. We thank you for it now. We thank you for the healing. God, we thank you for it now, for restoration. God, we pray for our nation. We pray for our president, God. We pray for salvation. We pray, God, that you will come in and change the hearts and the minds of the people. It's the sin. It's the sin. But we ask that love because we know that love covers a multitude of sin. And that, God, that you will send a love revival all across this nation and across this world. That, God, that you will begin to change the hearts and the minds of your people. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for your people. I love y'all. I thank you, God, for tuning in to listen to Pertina, to listen to what I have to say that God has given me. I take it not lightly. I thank you. I pray for each and every one of you. I pray for healing. I pray for restoration. I pray for deliverance. I pray that God will begin to bless you abundantly. I pray for doors to begin to open. I pray for a mountain of blessings. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that God, that you will restore their hearts, that you will restore relationships, that you will restore them now. I cancel the assignment of the enemy. I cancel backlash. I cancel premature death. Right now, with the name of Jesus, I ask God that you will open every door that's been shut. That you will open every door that's been shut. God, I pray for your people. I pray for the love of God to arrest them. God, I thank you for it now. I give it over to you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for moving in our life. We thank you for moving in our life. You died for us. You died for us. I don't think we understand.
this word please share please share it with others please flood other people timeline if you know people that need to hear this word that they they've been downtrodden they feel like they're defeated all God is required is a greater sacrifice so we bless God for you you and you we give God the praise the glory and the honor I love y'all to life I give God the praise Bless God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. See y'all back here next Sunday. And also, I just started with Eternal Life TV. And so, uh, I don't know if you guys have, uh, well, it is on Facebook, and it's Eternal Life TV. And they're going to be streaming this broadcast again on Thursday night at 8. So, if you miss it, um, that's so I can get the word out more and more and more and so God connected me with this uh, this woman of God that um, and so I'm connected with her and so they're going to be broadcasting it so I'm excited about what God is doing also I got new music coming out soon um, uh, very soon I'm just waiting on the um, the date the release date and so I just bless God for what he's doing in my life what he's doing in my family life, and I, I what he's doing in your life. Hallelujah. So I, I look forward to all of these things, and I don't do these things for fame or fortune. I really just do it because I love the Lord, and as many people as I can reach and help and with the message of Jesus Christ, that's what I do. So I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for everything and everybody. And bless God for y'all. See y'all back here next week in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless.